everybody. We have a little bit different video for y'all today. This is a little video of me uh, doing some Sims 2 fan art. And this is a, uh, a character from our Sims 2 Strange View series specifically. Um, you might be able to figure out who it is as we're going here. Or maybe I'll just tell you. But this person is a uh, has become quite the quite the icon in our strange view. They are a pre-made from Pleasant View specifically, but uh, they they don't usually get that much attention. And for some reason, they have really just taken the center stage in our little town. And if you have guessed that it is Herb Oldie, then you are correct. <laughs> I gave it away. He is here holding a rose. I took some pictures. The only references for this drawing are a, uh, a screenshot that I took of him doing the interaction that is called the smooth talk, I believe. And so it's where they hand a rose over. It's like a special romance sim interaction. But yeah, so that's, that's what he's doing here. He's got his rose and his hearts and stuff. And I tried my hardest not to make him too creepy. <laughs> <laughs> he he's he's a he's a he's a creep, but I wanted him to look at least a little cute and cartoony. Um, the drawing is just meant to be kind of a lighthearted, easygoing sort of cartoony stylized look to it. And I I really like little Herb. I don't know if I ever want him to die. I don't know what to do as far as that. I think maybe I should have him um, take the there's a some kind of life. I can't remember. It like extends their life. It's like a juice they can drink that extends their life. They can get from rewards store or whatever. But I think he should do that. Maybe he should be the one that... I feel like he should he should be joining like the political career and he could become like the mayor. Which I know, like, I think senior sims can't actually do that. But I kind of want to find a mod that lets him do that. Just so he can like always be around for the duration of Strangeview. However long Strangeview goes. I don't really know... That's one thing I don't know about the series is like, how do you, how do you end a, a round? What do you, like, I feel like on my own when I've played round, you know, rotational, that's the word, rotational playing as um, in The Sims 2, I feel like I always just kind of played a little bit and then lost interest and then started over and I never actually like completed a series of, like, a, completed a town. I don't even know how to how that is what what do you do to complete a town <laughs> what i would love to know anybody who's listening who plays rotationally you know i've heard people say before like um they they play until all the original pre-mades have passed away and i can't i don't know how f if i'm willing to play that long or do you just play like a set amount of of like rounds you just play like a certain amount do you, do you decide, do you sit, do you play 10 rounds and then uh, unleash a zombie apocalypse on the town? I don't know. I, that would be pretty fun. Could Herbs survive the zombies? I don't know. Maybe we should try it out. <laughs> um, but, so that's something to that I've thought about before. I don't really know. Because I, it, ultimately, I would like to um, eventually explore all the pre-made towns in... Uh, like rotational play in my series. I would really like to look at some of the, the towns that came with like expansion packs. Of course right now I've only focused on playing rotationally the, the base hoods which are the most popular ones for a good reason. Um, but like Veronaville for example I never really played Veronaville on my own until I decided to start the series of it and um, I've definitely discovered that I, it's a really fun town. I've discovered that it's got a lot of cool stuff going on and um, I'm excited to discover that for some of the other pre-made towns down the line so I don't really know where I want to go with the with the rotational playthroughs like how far I should go because at a certain point it almost feels like too much but then at the same time you get attached to all the sims and you really enjoy it so it's like I don't know but something also that brings me to, I wanted to mention that today, that the day I'm recording this, um, I guess is the Sims 2's 18th anniversary, I think, 
is what it said. I think um, today's the 14th. I'm pretty sure that's what I saw it was today, or maybe it was yesterday. But so that's kind of fun. We got a little, um, little Sims 2 anniversary. One of the the arguably probably the best iterations versions of The Sims that um, has ever come out. Um, although a lot of them have have positives, there's also a lot of negatives, but. Overall, I like The Sims 2. I think it's got some of the best gameplay. It's kind of cool that it's 18 years old. Um, that means that I would have been exactly like 10 years old when it came out. And I can remember buying, um, getting one of the expansion packs for The Sims 1 and seeing on the back the advertisement that it was going to be coming in 2004. The, the Sims 2 was kind of neat. Um, I have a lot of the old, my old cases and everything. It's definitely been one of my favorite games of all time. Although I do play a lot of other games and stuff, like anybody does, but I've always thought about whether I would ever want to share more, um, different games and stuff. I don't know that, I probably wouldn't want to do it on this channel, though. There we go. We've got the we've got the first sketch here of Mr. Herb done. Um, I put in this uh, Simlish, and he um, technically it's well. It originally said hello. I think it said hello there, gorgeous. <laughs> that seemed like something he would say. And then I I decided I didn't like how the Simlish like letters for gorgeous looked, and I tried beautiful, and then I just kind of forgot about it and left it like that so that's i think it ended up staying like that but yeah we're getting into the um the actual line work here which is always the most satisfying part watching the carefully the lines be carefully put down um i've always been a big fan of doing line work over like rendered painting i i can do rendered painting and stuff but there's something that i find a lot more um, enjoyable about line work and playing with the line weight which of course is like the different thicknesses and stuff that sort of give it um, a more lively appearance and everything so I'm really happy with this I did end up later on I'll uh, maybe I'll mention it or maybe I'll forget <laughs> but I do um, use decide to use a different Photoshop brush and I actually redid this this line work and this in this I'm using a classic just round hard photoshop brush um with some different like pressure settings but i do eventually decide to um go back over it with a different brush that i have that is a um supposed to sort of simulate like a pencil and so it added a nice amount of texture to it which i really um i like i like to have a little bit more it makes the, the drawing look a little bit more warm or something you know it's like a little bit more comfortable not like not like temp not like actual color warm but like it's just a lot nicer um a lot more comfortable looking and i kind of just like the the cozy doodly kind of look that it has when it has a little bit more of like a pencil texture to it so that i ended up sticking with but yeah These hands gave me some trouble. You'll see me go through a different, a few different phases of trying to get them to do what I wanted them to. One of my favorite things to draw is hands, but um, of course I wasn't, didn't really have a reference for these. I, I was roughly looking at how the game posed his hand, and I didn't, I didn't really want it. It's weird in the actual game. His hand, the rose is almost being held between his, his index and thumb 
but I kind of didn't think that I thought that was a little weird and didn't really like how it looked so I ended up kind of making his hand a little bit more closed around it but I generally am one that has to kind of put things on the paper to see what it looks like and then erase it and do something else and then erase it and do something else until I decide on something that's what ends up happening later on with his eyes I had a bad time trying to get his eyes to look like I wanted them to I do have a um, sort of a, a thing where when I'm drawing with my own sort of cartoony stylized way I tend to draw hands kind of chunky I don't know why I just I like how it looks a little bit better so he's got chunky hands and that's just kind of how it is um, I would like to say also I referenced the the rose um, from the game for what I'm gonna make the rose look like here and it is um, a little bit strange looking compared to like an actual rose I guess I don't know if maybe it's not strange, just it doesn't look as realistic as a real rose, but once again, it's just kind of a cartoony thing referencing the game, so. But I kind of liked how it looked, too. I ended up doing some tweaking with it and everything, but. Yeah, I, I would like to um, have this be kind of like a series of different, um, different sims. I'd like to come up with different uh, characters from my Strange View series, as well as maybe some pre-mades from Veronaville, uh, would be really cool. One one that I was actually just thinking of that would be fun. That's sort of a, un a character unique to the Strange View series, not just like a general pre-made. Would be Zosma Curious. Um, she's Pascal's daughter, and she's quite the character. I wanted to when I when I draw them, I want to do like them. Um, doing something or, you know, acting a way that they would, doing something that they like or acting like, like obviously Herb here is doing his romance, but like I was thinking it'd be cute to have like Zosma playing chess or something or like looking, looking like a little, little nerd that she kind of is, but of course she's a teenager now if I'm not mistaken, so I'll draw her as a teen. I always think of her as a kid, but she's not. But yeah, we're finally working on Herb's little face here. I think I'm pretty happy with how the... I usually have a hard time drawing mouths for some reason. Even like a stylized mouth like this. Um, but his mouth and nose turned out nicely. It was his eyes that gave me a ton of trouble. I ended up tweaking them. You'll see me kind of drawing them here now. The thing is, is I find when you're drawing like this and you're... Been, I've been looking at this sketch for a few hours at this point in the drawing. Um, it's easy to like miss things, whereas like going back and editing and looking at it right now, I can see that the eyes are super wonky. One's tiny and one's giant and <laughs> they just look very strange. Um, and while I was drawing it, I could tell something wasn't right, but it was like I had been looking at it for so long that I couldn't quite figure out what it was. And it was frustrating. I do oftentimes just like take a break and come back and I think with this drawing it was like it was late at night I decided to just stop drawing and pick it up in the morning and that was when I redid his eyes eventually I just completely erase his eyes and redraw them um, to make them actually look good because they look they look really rough right here everything else looks okay but his eyes are just like not it but yeah I kind of ended up erasing them and restructuring them completely trying to kind of have to use some of his other elements of his face to sort of feel out where they were supposed to be and everything which even here as I'm sketching it it's kind of not quite right but then again like I said it's just kind of supposed to be stylized and I ended up liking how it how it turned out you know it's a little little goofy looking it's not the most I do a lot of um, like more realism drawing and referencing directly from like a photo of a person so it's always like a weird feeling um, when it comes to doing something like this where I'm just kind of freehand drawing the thing without just kind of roughly referencing um, the character in the game. Though I think in the future um, for the other ones that I draw, 
eventually. I would like to try and um, maybe do a little bit more fuller little reference for like a um, screenshot reference from the game. So like even using because like in the picture that I used it was just a little backdrop custom object I put right on like herbs, uh, Herb's front lawn and I just took his picture there but in the future maybe I'd play around with lighting and stuff similar to some of the stuff that we did with Helen's satellite from that series if you happen to have seen that that was some, some of the early sims art stuff I have done I do have other sims art that if you if you like this they're a little bit older now but yeah um, I've done um, some artwork of Don Lothario, and then I've done some other um, pictures, uh, like photo editing and rendering and things of that nature related to The Sims, or like using The Sims as a subject matter for it. But I would like to, similar to with the um, Don Lothario pictures I did, well I did, I was right, I did Don Lothario, but then I also um, had some of I have some artwork of Dina Caliente already and then Bella Goth already that I had made into like posters that you could download into The Sims 2 and I, I could probably, I don't think, I'm, I think I only made them for The Sims 2 but it'd be kind of fun to come up with a way to put like these pieces of artwork that I'm doing here and any other future ones that are kind of part of this little series eventually make them into like stuff that can be put into the game, decorated with and stuff, that'd be kind of fun. Um, I don't know what kind of, if it would just be as a, as a poster or like a big, um, big painting. I don't know. So we, we have moved on here to the actual coloring and um, shading. I decided to do a very simple, um, kind of what's considered sort of a, sh a, a cell shading is kind of how it's termed, but it's just kind of a, a blocky general shading. And I decided to use a method here that is grayscaling, is, is what I know it as. It may be called different things in other, other practices, I don't know, but essentially it's where you, I, as you can see, I filled in herb in a solid mid gray color and then I'm putting down the darkest shade that I want the darkest shadows um, and then I go in with a sort of slightly lighter gray um, well a gray that's slightly lighter than the the shadows so that it's kind of like the middle shadows a little bit lighter shadows um, and then afterwards I go in with a light gray that's sort of like a highlight and of course, since I'm not um, referencing any sort of uh, realistic like pictures of, of light and everything, I was kind of roughly referencing the lighting in the game from the, the, the Herb picture, but for the most part, I was just kind of doing whatever I liked, which is something that I do a lot when I, when I draw stylized. I just kind of put the shadows where I like them and what I think, you know, makes the, the picture look cool. So they might not be the most if, if you're a real stickler for putting the shadows exactly where the light is coming from and all that, this might be annoying to look at because maybe I haven't done it as, as thoroughly as some might. But I just kind of, I, I like just putting things wherever the heck I want them to because they're just, it's a fun doodle that's for me, you know what I mean? It's but anyway, I'm really, I'm happy with how the shading came out. And then um, I didn't really finish explaining. So after the gray scaling, um, what happens is then I, I'll, you'll see, I start to put in a, um, a flat color. That's kind of how it's termed. So it, I'll just start laying down solid color of what I want all his, like his shirt and his pants and his everything to be and his skin and hair and eyes and all that. And then I use the Photoshop, um, layer settings. They have some different, um, things you can kind of tweak that causes the layers to sort of interact with each other in a certain way. Um, and so I, I overlay them together using some of the settings. And so it kind of puts the mushes together, the, the shading with the flat color and kind of does a lot of the, the work of actually shading of the specific colors. Um, and 
when I do that, I do add, I ended up adding a gradient overlay, which made it so that this grayscale actually has like a nice gradient of different colors. Um, that kind of helps it not be so dead looking. I don't really know how else to say it. It's like sometimes the gray, when it's just overlaid with the color, it it ends up kind of flat and I guess kind of washed out or something along those lines. But you'll see when I when I get to that point what I'm even talking about. Also, I, I forgot to mention at this point, you can tell that this is where I have already redone the line work in that um, more pencil-y, chalky, textured um, Photoshop brush. And I'm also shading in that same textured brush so it, so the, the this um, light and shadow has the same sort of textury, doodly texture. So here we, we go with starting the color. I originally started with the settings already overlaid. So we got a little preview of what it looks like when they're kind of mushed together, when they're overlaid together. But I decided to just do the filling in of the um, of all the color. It was kind of fun trying to replicate his, uh, his sweater. I tried to reference the exact pattern he had on the front of it. I did a bunch of, as you can see along the, the, the left side here, I have a bunch of little color swatches. Those were def picked directly from the screenshot. So I just have just color picked all of his various colors that make up Herb, the, the, the many colors of Herb Oldie. So oh, I was just thinking about so far with our with our herb, we do have um, he's got one biological child in Strange View. I don't know if that's enough though. I think we need more. We need more herb babies. I don't know. I don't know who's gonna have his baby next. I feel like there's probably multiple townies that if if I don't think the game works this way, but if it were to work this way, where if like a sim or to impregnate a townie, that if you were to bring that townie into the household, they would suddenly kind of, that pregnancy would start progressing, like as if it had been on hold all that time. Imagine, <laughs> imagine like marrying in townies, like like generations down the line, and suddenly she she's pregnant, and you're like, wait a minute, what the heck? And then she has a her baby, you know, he's been dead for generations. <laughs> that would be really screwed up. <laughs> I feel like that's something that could totally happen in this game, though, with the way things go. And 
I actually really like, even though, like I said, I, I didn't really do color choosing on my own for, for filling in his, what colors he is. I just did exactly what he has in game. Um, I'm really happy with the, the light blue because eventually I do add some pinks and stuff for his, uh, for the hearts and his background. And then also some of the tinting of the coloring that I, I do afterwards of like the shading when I, um, when I tint the, the grayscale. Um, they end up kind of that, that pink and blue kind of is a nice little color combo. I enjoy that. Here we are giving, giving him a little bit of blush, a little bit of color. I decided to put a little purple around his eyes to give him a little old man, little old man purple. I don't know. It seemed like something he'd have. Maybe he's been up all night at the club and he's, his, his eyes are purple. He's tired, but he's still going to try and ask you out at 6 a.m. on the at the club sitting on the dance floor. It's Herb Oldie as the sun's coming up. So here we are adding um, some gradient colors to our scale, our uh, gray scaling. And then I overlay the colors. So now we have a nice little shaded herb. I'm experimenting with some different gradients to find the right one. Um, some of them kind of create some different temperature effects, but I did end up ending with this one. And then I ended up actually um, making the, all of the line work instead of making it a pure black I decided to make it like a dark brown that also just kind of softened things which was nice and, and again warmed things up a little bit but yeah we ended up with a nice little pink background I think I ended up tweaking the exact shade of pink because this is a very like peachy there it is but yeah see so you can see I like the I like the, the very light blue collar next to the pink looks very nice we have our nice little speech bubble here. I really enjoy adding Simlish to anything that I can. I think that's fun. <laughs> Tried to make his little mouth shine his little tooth shine pop a little bit i don't know how well it truly worked but this is my favorite part whenever i do a little illustration like this is doing a white outline i do it if i if i'm painting in real life like in like you know like in traditional paper and watercolor gouache whatever i'm painting i always have to do my white white outline with like a gel pen or something I, it's just a an addiction i guess i i can't help it i have to do the white outlines it just makes everything pop, I think. And especially in an illustration like this, I really liked how it looks. We gotta, we gotta give his, his those those beautiful green, deep green emerald eyes of Herb Oldie a nice, nice pop. Add in a few last little bits of highlight, just to make everything kind of pop a little bit. Um, and yeah, we're pretty much done with this one. Like I said, I'm really um, interested in trying to do more of them. I would love some suggestions of what characters from general pre-made characters or specific characters from our series that have come about you would like to see. I think I have a couple of ideas, so I do. Like I said, I've already done Dawn in a previous illustration. I've already done, um, I've already done, uh, Bella. I've already done Dina. I believe that's kind of it for who I've officially sort of done in, um, in an actual little illustration. So I, I don't really have any interest in redoing those. But yeah, we have some, some strange town kids I could do. Yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this kind of different little little uh, video. I had some folks that mentioned they would like some more of the art videos. So here we are. Um, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time, probably in some kind of actual gameplay video. <laughs> All right, thanks. Bye. <laughs>